Let me tell you about my computer. The Coleman Z80 computer is a modular system made of many hand-built cards which all plug into a universal bus. This approach was selected because an SBC, or single board computer, does not have the same capacity to accept hardware changes. Changes I may seek to make as I learn about the many parts of a Z80 system over time. This design is utilizing a Z80 CPU clocked at 1.84 MHz. There is a 512K ROM, which is bankable, and 256K of RAM. The I.O., or input-output map, is as follows. The memory map looks like this. These are the various cards that make up the system. When I settled on a modular system design, I knew I needed card edge prototyping boards. I found these online in an Apple I form, as they are compatible with the 44 pin card edge connectors that were popular with that machine and others in the 70s and the 8 bit era. The frontmost through holes correspond to the top side fingers, the back through holes correspond to the bottom side fingers. There are universal power and ground bus connections which are user oriented but are found in these rows of two. These are the edge connector slots that inspired the whole system. An electronic supply store online was having a clearance of vintage products and they had many of these for $1 a piece. I bought 20 and have implemented them in this Z80 system. My first prototype used the edge connectors, however I had merely soldered the backplane connections together with thin wire. This was suitable for a while, but over time as the system got more complex, my signal integrity had diminished and I knew it was time for the next step. Thus, I designed this backplane design in Eagle PCB design software and sent off for the PCBs to PCB Way. This was my first PCB design and I think it came out pretty well. At the time, I only had the free version of Eagle, which only allows for 80 by 100 centimeter boards. With these constraints, I merely made them expandable boards that could be daisy chained together by including breakout through holes on both the top and bottom of the board. My signal integrity returned with the use of these boards. Myriad peripheral devices had been constructed to realize this project properly. A benchtop power supply was made from an old Dell computer power supply. I broke out differing voltages and fused all the lines. This was important because there were many shorts that occurred during the development of the boards. The fuses protected the power supply perfectly. I started with Ben Eater's clock circuit for his 6502 breadboard computer, but I have since simplified that design. Early layout of the Z80 computer started on the breadboard, and I think this was necessary to take every small step towards my final design. Let's take a more in-depth analysis of each card and their requisite features. First, the CPU card. The Z80 CPU is on the left side of the board, and the clock circuit is on the right. The ICs on the right here are used in the slow clock setting, which is adjustable with this potentiometer. Alternatively, there are prefabricated oscillators, which run at 1.84 and 3.57 MHz respectively. Any one of these three clock signals can be selected via this jumper. There is also a reset button. Next is the ROM and RAM card. The RAM is the longer IC, situated on the right, with its requisite glue logic. 
The ROM is inserted into a ZIF socket, or zero insertion force socket, as it is often removed and replaced for programming the basic functions of the computer. The ROM is bankable with these jumpers, which forces the system to see only certain blocks of ROM within the chip. The next card is very attractive when running the computer at slow speeds. It shows the address the computer is accessing at the time it is accessing it. This card also has 8 pull-down resistors for the data bus, thus making this card vital for the system. The next card is useful in interfacing the computer with the outside world without bogging down the CPU too much. It uses the once ubiquitous Intel 8255 chip. 8-bit port A is broken out on the right here, 8-bit port B is here, and 8-bit port C is here. The I.O. address for the PIA is selectable via this jumper. This card is hardwired to address 00 in hexadecimal, and it is just a simple 16x2 LCD screen, which is the simplest display output possible for this system. The LCD slots into this breakout connector. The next card is this serial interface card, which allows for this computer to speak to terminals or send serial data to devices. I used the 16550 serial device because it has a lot of documentation for interfacing with a CPU like the Z80. This empty IC slot is prepared for use with a MAX232 chip, but it is not populated or necessary now that I have these more convenient converters connected. One is a serial to RS-232 adapter, and the other is Bluetooth. Next, we have a simple sound card. It uses the Texas Instruments SN76489 chip, which has three channels of tones and one channel of white noise. It operates on an 8-bit interface which has been broken out into pins, and the chip is driven by an onboard 4 MHz oscillator. As earlier stated, this is the old CPU card. I needed to rebuild the CPU card for signal integrity, but this still had the useful data bus display. Thus I keep it around for troubleshooting or just the good looks of these vintage Texas Instrument hex displays. They show the value that is on the data bus in the same way that the address card works. Finally, we have an Arduino Mega, simply interfaced to the clock signal. I am able to program this Arduino to output varying speeds which allows for reliable testing. These cards do all speak to each other via the bus I have created, but sometimes they need to be linked externally as there are only 44 pins on the bus and there is not enough room for varying sets of 8-bit data lines which go to varying cards. Here's an example of how the parallel interface adapter would link to the sound card. In this way, the two cards can speak to each other. This is my paint palette, so to speak, which contains many 74 logic chips and various parts I have on hand to build out the system. Here is a printout I used for reference of the bus I have designed and its requisite signals. Four pins were left open for future use, and they come and go as to their use as I move through various stages of the development of the system. To illustrate the abilities of this computer, I will first show how we can communicate directly with the 1602 LCD display via a terminal program on my Mac 
which is connected via Bluetooth to our Z80 system. I purchased this amazing terminal program called Serial for 40 US dollars, and it is perfect for developing and interfacing with a, such a system as this. We will connect to the Bluetooth device located in our system. Upon connecting, we're greeted with the splash text of the system, which introduces us to this minimal operating system. Pressing H for help shows us the options that we have. First, to show basic functionality, we will dump the contents of a portion of the ROM to the terminal screen. Here we can see the ASCII text, which is part of the aforementioned intro text upon first booting the computer. So let's address that LCD screen and put some text on it. We do this via an IO port write command. On the right I have this assembly program which simply initializes the screen and then opens its communication channels to receive hex values which are associated to ASCII text. We note address 00 is the address which receives control commands for the LCD, and we note that address 01 receives data for displaying text. All we do now is follow the assembly program step by step to manually do what a program does automatically. We write 380F0601 to the command port in order. We then write to port 01 the actual hex values of the ASCII text we want to write to the screen. I used a simple online converter in order to determine what these values were. Here's a self-explanatory demo which plays four tones via the sound card. In conclusion, this has been an amazing journey. About three years ago, I started with the absolute basics of electronics by flashing an LED with a 555 timer. That was a huge development to me at that time as I really sought to understand our digital world and how all of these things function. As time went on, I learned more and more. I applied myself to more and more concepts and builds and what would result is a fully functioning Z80 computer system of which I can be proud. It's nowhere near done, but it does set the foundation for future concepts and peripherals. For example, I seek to build a composite video circuit so that this computer is truly standalone and needs no other computer or terminal to access it. Of course, a keyboard interface is on the way as well with such intentions as these. But I am facing a change in my life right now where I will be moving to a place where I cannot take my lab with me. Thus, I have made this video to be able to reflect while I am away from my Z80 system. I can spend the time dreaming, designing, and expanding concepts in a more academic sense now that I have a confident basis of hands-on understanding. One day I hope to get this system playing something like Tetris, with a keyboard attached and any old screen displaying the game. A true standalone computer which models those of the great 8-bit era of the 1980s. Until that time, I'll keep dreaming, and for what it's worth, I hope you do too. Thanks for watching.